In our everyday lives, we don't think too deeply about how we share information sources. But when it comes to academic research, it's very important to let your reader know where you got your information. There are a few good reasons to cite and reference your sources, beyond it being a requirement of your assignment. First and foremost, without some way of citing your sources, it's unclear which parts of your paper are your ideas and which came from someone else. The different citation styles help you to formally indicate when you're using an idea outside of your own direct experience or imagination. Also, integrating good expert sources into your work borrows from that expertise and authority and gives your paper more impact. Good research requires the use of good sources, so when you point to a high-quality source, you take some of that high-quality for yourself. Finally, citing and referencing all the ideas you use will help you to avoid plagiarizing any sources. Plagiarism is what we're going to talk about next. Here's the definition of plagiarism as provided by the MLA. It is presenting another person's ideas, information, expressions, or entire work as one's own. Notice that this doesn't need to be intentional. You can plagiarize by accident, and in fact this happens a lot. Also notice it doesn't really matter what format the information is in. If it's published, shared, or otherwise tangible, it needs to be cited. So things like YouTube videos, tweets, Instagram photos, etc., all need to be cited, even if they feel like less formal sources. The main thing that seems to cause students problems is just being sloppy in the process of researching for their papers. If you take detailed notes as you read and make sure you include a citation and a reference for each idea you use, you will not be at risk of plagiarism. The citation style you use depends on the subject area you're in and the assignment criteria. In this example, we're required to use the MLA format for the sources that we use. You can find all the major style guides in the library or by using the research guides available online. I'll provide some links in the description. You may also consider getting familiar with one of the many reference manager programs out there. Some notable ones like Zotero, RefWorks, or EndNote can really assist you in generating citations and references. So what does citing and referencing look like? Each style will look a little different, but the basic structure is usually the same. It involves two parts, first an in-text citation, and next a full reference. The example we'll use here will be in MLA format, but please make sure you are using the right style for your own work. All quotations or paraphrased ideas need an in-text citation directly in the body of your paper. In APA and MLA formats, the citation will appear in parentheses at the end of the sentence or paragraph. Other styles may use different methods, including footnotes or endnotes, so again, please make sure you're using the correct style. Note, in this second example, I've put the idea in my own words. This is called paraphrasing, but I still need to provide a citation. I included the author's names in the text of my summary, so I don't need to restate them again in parentheses. Once again, your style may vary. Then, every citation will need a corresponding full reference at the end of your paper. This will help your reader to find the original source if they want. Both of these elements, the in-text citation and the reference, are necessary to properly cite a source. The in-text citation will quickly and unobtrusively indicate when an idea from elsewhere is being used. The reference will guide the reader to the original source. To make this as easy as possible when it comes time to actually write your paper, I recommend including this information in your notes as you read and learn from your sources. This is just an example, but whatever system you use, try to be as methodical as possible when you take notes. It will make things a lot easier later on. If you have any questions about this or any aspect of library research, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help you out.